Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we are back working on the little Roadster pickup shop truck project. And uh, we made some big moves in the past handful of videos. Um, we got the engine all mounted up, we got the steering all set, the, the kick ass all over and dash, and all of that st stuff mounted in the, in the uh, truck, and it's looking pretty cool. So, one of the next things we need to do is work on getting pedals and brakes and uh, clutch all sorted out on this truck and we've been working with old Yankee Speedco. They have a bunch of really neat kits they've been working on and coming out with over the past couple years that make it a lot easier to do this type of work. So traditionally uh, what you would have done with these cars a lot of times is take like a 32 Ford uh, K-member and graft it into the frame back in the day when that stuff was just laying around the junkyards, no big deal. They're getting pretty pricey these days so to buy an original K-member and cut it up and put it in a Model A frame is, is uh, you know, not very cost effective. The other thing you can do is use an F1 pickup cross member that integrates the, back, the F1 pedals into it. Um, and that also works, but requires, again, finding a part that's getting hard to find. You have to cut into the frame to install that and weld it in. And it takes a little bit of engineering to get all of the, uh, all of the links and bracketry to work correctly. It's not just like a bolt in type thing. So, Old Yankee has come through with this kit that is a kind of mix of a little bit of all of those ideas. So they have this kit that we have laying in front of us that actually utilizes um, original Model A pedals, which is really nice, so it'll kind of keep that old look and feel, uh, but also utilizes some newer parts for safety. We have a dual circuit master cylinder, um, and then they have all the linkage and everything in the brackets. And it is essentially, quote unquote, a bolt-on kit, does require a little bit of drilling, some stuff like that, but it is a fairly straightforward kit that should go together um, using a mix of their fabricated parts and also some original parts. So we're gonna work on putting this kit in. Hopefully by the end here, I will have a working clutch and we'll have brake pedal all set up so that we're all set to start running brake lines and make this thing stop, steer, and soon start and drive. So one of the first things with this kit, it has uh, the, some of the bracketry that actually will end up holding on using these two bolts here and it also uses some of the uh, bell housing bolts. But um, one of the things we noticed when we got the kit was they, uh, in the pictures that Matt sent me for this kit, uh, uses a different um, clutch rod, if you want to call it that, that goes through the transmission and uh, hooks to the fork that works the clutch. Uh, because of using the original Model A pedals, it actually the shaft is a little longer. It has to stick out of the V8 trans further than it does originally. You can see originally it was really tight in here. Um, for the Model A, it needs to be like somewhere like out in here like right about there. So you have this longer shaft. So we need to pull the, the trans out of this thing and, uh, and then we need to drill some rivets to slide the fork off. This is already oriented for putting the fork right back on there. So it shouldn't be too big of a job. The hardest thing is just pulling um, this apart. Now, if you're doing this, if you have this kit all in one shot, we've been getting the stuff as they've been kind of engineering it and coming out with it. Um, you could do it before you put the engine in trans. We did not, so we gotta pull this trans real quick and uh, show you guys how to put that shift in. Jack her up. So we got the trans off and you can see what I was talking about here. So this is the shaft that Old Yankee supplies with it. It's a little bit longer. It has this um, arm that's TIG welded on there, which works out well. And then you can see you got this fork here, so you can't just pull it out of the transmission with it in the car. Um, you have to take the, the throttle bearing off with the spring and then there's like a rivet that's in here. And you can see it's, it's like smashed here and, and then back through here. So you have to cut it off. And then a lot of times you have to drill it out or knock it out, but it's kind of a pain in the butt to get that out. So we couldn't do that in the car, so we pulled the trans. So we'll do it here on the bench. Once we get that good, you can just actually nut and bolt this. It's usually not too much of a problem. And uh, they already have the shaft drilled for that, so it should kind of self-align. So 
Now use the uh, little Slim Eastwood reversible cutoff grinder to get in there and cut that side. And uh, we'll see if we can get this thing knocks, knocked out in uh, a few minutes. Together. One thing we want to mention it is not really a fault of the kit, but it's just when you're working with old stuff. Um, this crossbar uh, fits onto this little fork and it's supposed to fit pretty tight. So when we pulled the old one apart, we basically just tapped it apart and it came apart pretty easy. We started putting this fork on this new rod and it was like super tight. Like we, we probably could have hammered it together, but then it's very hard to spin it to locate your holes again to get everything lined up and it's just we're like smash it on there which we don't want with this it should slide and since it's pinned it doesn't really need to be an interference fit so what well, it's barely barely off so what we've been doing is just taking some sandpaper and just put in the vise and sanding just a little bit at a time and we put a little bit of oil on it and it's starting to slide together so before we couldn't even get it on that far now we're slowly getting it in and we could twist it on I don't have any oil on it yet but so we're going to do another pass but depending on your fork or to condition your parts maybe when this was made they were using a fork that was a little it all it takes is like a thousandth to be off or something like that fractional amount and it could go from being a slip fit to an interference fit which is very difficult because it has to go together like in the trance so it's not like you can heat this and just quick throw it together very easily so um, we're just going to hit this with sandpaper just a little more it only needs to go to right there um, and the little bit I'm doing just with the sandpaper is just taking enough off of the surface that it'll, it's starting to slip on. So you just got to creep up on it. But if you have this kit, it's not something that's necessarily the kit's fault. It could just be that, you know, again, 100-year-old parts, this type of thing will happen. And if it's the most we have to do, not a big deal. Yeah. 
right, so we're going to slide the pedal on. Uh, Steve got the bracket down here all bolted on. That's good. Um, this uses the kit uses stock Model A pedals, but. Um, go ahead, Steve. You can slide it on. We uh, we did a test fit. And we could already see with our configuration with the 34 uh, steering box moved back a little bit. It is causing some uh, some issues. So that guy slides on there, and then there's some hind joints that connect. But you can see right up here the steering uh, or I'm sorry, the steering column is hitting the pedal and causing an issue. It's also really high. Um, I think we're going to sit a little lower in this car, so we may have to shorten this pedal arm a little bit. But what we're going to do is set it up with the, the pedal how it is, so we can kind of put the kit together like stock, and then we will adjust for our steering column you know, down in here later. But where it's sitting right now, it's definitely going to be an issue with that. Who knows, maybe we can trim a little bit off there and it'll pass by. I don't know yet. but. We will uh, we'll go from there, but this, like Steve was showing, this little heim joint will connect here, and then there's a push rod down at the bottom that will go back, and then there's this bracket here that actually bolts underneath the flange, and you, um, you go through the cross member at the flanges there, so we have to drill four holes. That will bolt through and hold that in, it'll also box in this cross member that's in here and then we can mount our master cylinder right to that. So once we get all this stuff in and bolt it up, then we can see we gotta modify the stock arms to get it to fit. And we're also gonna test fit the clutch arm as well here in a few minutes. All right, so we got our pedals all mounted in. Moon's checking it out, seeing if he likes everything. What do you think, buddy? Um, so we got the pedals mounted in. I think you may have heard us or may not. Uh, with the 34 column in here, uh, the position that it's at, it actually kind of, the edge of the pedal runs into the column here, the stock configuration. Looking at it, it looks like we could probably just lop off this little edge here or heat and bend the pedal and move it this way just a tiny bit to clear, but that's a minor thing. We're leaving that alone for right now. We'll deal with that later. We got the clutch all mounted in. We rebushed the clutch. Um, the one we first tried to fit was bent, so we grabbed another one we had laying around. Rebush that one, it's all good. Everything's mounted. I gotta adjust it up to where this linkage down here just starting to touch the pedal. It's already got pressure on it, so it's you know, very little free play. We got plenty of adjustments. So um, now that we have all that stuff good, we have to just put the bracket on. It was probably hard to see. There's this long push rod contraption here. Um, so there's a, there's a little heim joint, and then there's this like aluminum um, piece that they made that has another push rod on it. This is just for the extension because the uh, master cylinder is going to sit like way back here, push this way. Maybe not that far, but like right about here. So we had to, they had to make an adapter for that. So now what we can do is we can line up this push rod, make sure it's kind of straight in line, and then we could clamp our bracket in place so that the master cylinder is sitting right in line. Steve's got it here so you can see. So we'll line it up so that that push rod is, this is clamped under the frame, and the push rod looks like it's going straight. That'll tell us where it needs to be. And then we can, uh, there's just four holes that need to be drilled in the flanges of the cross member, and we can bolt this bracket in. We're uh, just about breaking. Where you say I'm getting too old for this shit. Uh, it's, I, I think I'm like grunting and groaning, kind of, <laughs> kind of, you know. Hi, Moon. Hi, Moon. Yeah. Uh, especially when you got a little bit of a cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, man. I think it's extra, extra long. Hey. Moon, what are you doing? <laughs> it's time. It's time for my. Oh, shit. Yeah, hard to work when you're in.
turn that bolt. Bolt? Yeah. Really? Come on, man. Thank you, man. All right, that will clear. Oh. Right, so that, you can see all the linkage down here now, how this all works. Now we made some clearance. So I uh, yeah, we have our feed line for our oil for the for the blower here. So we're gonna need to rebend that to get some more because we're running into that line. I think hopefully that we will have enough throw of the pedal once we get to that. But all this linkage with the bell cranks is working out good. You can feel it pushing the master cylinder just fine. So um, it's gonna trim near the clutch area and then on the sheet metal and then we should be good. All right, got that trimmed with the Sawzall. Now we can just, we'll just sand a little bit with a, with a flat disc and clean it up a little bit, but now we have clearance. The clutch is engaging and disengaging just fine. And other than barely rubbing on the top of the pedal, it's good. So now we got everything kind of swinging correctly. The linkage down here you can see is working very nicely. Uh, this is the bar that we put in through the trans. You reuse the stock uh, rod here and this little, um, little piece that goes through the pedal there and when you push on this you can see it pushes up pulls up on the clutch arm and engages and disengages our clutch so we got our pedals all swinging now which is nice All right, so we got the pedals all mounted. The last couple shots, I was just uh, cutting out around the pedals on the firewall just a little bit um, because the pedals, I think, sit a little bit higher. The, we just had to do a little bit of notching, nothing very major here. A um, Couple things I'm gonna have to work on. Uh, I had to notch my pedal here. I wanted to mention that too. I think I said it earlier, but that is because of my steering column setup. I moved the steering column back and it's actually laid down a little bit more than a stock Model A would be. So that ran into a little issue with the pedal. All I did was just notch the, took the corner of the pedal off on this side and rounded it off. And we have still plenty of pedal pad to push on. So it should be no problem at all. Clutch side is pretty good. I have to adjust our oil line for the blower in the back there. That's hitting the pedal. So we have to just rebend that to give us, you know, enough throw. But overall, everything is moving as it should. Everything's still dry, obviously. Clutch has got plenty of pressure, full throw there. So we're going in the right direction. Overall, the kit was pretty good. I mean, the biggest thing was just making sure that you put that main shaft in for the clutch uh, before you put your whole engine and trans together. I didn't realize that and we jumped the gun. So I had to pull the trans out. And once we got that done and slid together, everything else was pretty close to bolt on other than drilling a handful of holes. So now that we have this kit in, we can start working on making brake lines, getting everything plumbed, and uh, get all our you know backing plates rebuilt and all that stuff. And soon this thing will have working brakes. We have a working clutch already. Uh, pretty much just make a drive shaft and we could probably hot wire this thing and take it around the neighborhood. I can't wait to get this pile of bolts rolling around town. So thank you guys for following along. If you want to learn more about this old Yankee kit, we're going to drop their, uh, their website, their distributor, Millworks down below. You can check out their, their products there and uh, definitely sell them. Tell them that Iron Trap sent you. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.